guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This week we are going to continue on from our pumpkins from last week. I'm sorry if there was a bit of confusion about when part two would be posted, but as you can see, it's being posted today on Friday. I have already made the one pouch, as you've seen before, and I'm going to show you how to make a pouch very similar. I have all my pieces already set. I have my front designer cover, so this is going to be the front of my pouch or the back, however you flip it and turn it. I'm going to be making this as the front because I'm going to put the zipper pull on the left hand side. Generally speaking, most people are right handed, you're going to put the zipper pull so that you open it this way. Anyone who's left handed can easily flip the pouch over and zip it from that way. Both of these sides of this pouch are going to be fine, but if you're making it for yourself or for a left handed person and you want it to be more for them then you might want to put your zipper pull on the right hand side so that they can open and close it with their left hand. I'm sure they're pretty well used to having to do it the other way based on things that are already mass produced out there to purchase. But I have my outside fabric. I cut a backing fabric to match. Nice bright colors. Oops, sorry about shaking. And on the back of these, I put some fusible on it. I did some fusible stabilizer just to, I want to give it a little bit of a body to it, but I didn't want this pouch to be stiff. I wanted to, it doesn't have to stand up on its own because it's a flat, it doesn't have any gussets. I wanted to have a little bit of extra to the fabric. If you're using something like denim or a linen or corduroy or something, then you probably don't need to use anything like this. And you can quilt it if you'd like, but I'm going for the non-quilted version. I wanted it to have a little bit of stability and a little bit of sturdy, but I still wanted it to be able to crunch up and fold up so it's not a stiff bag. You can use any level of stabilizer that you would like. You can use a sturdier one. You can double up on two of the thinner ones. I just have the SF-101, a nice lightweight one on mine. It also helps when you're doing any type of applique. It just helps the fabric keep from puckering. And based on whatever size those are, I have cut two pieces for my lining. I've cut everything the same exact size, so it's all gonna match up. And then I also chose my zipper. Now we talked about zippers a little bit last week, but I've chosen a zipper that is longer than my pouch so that this zipper head right here and the stopper here are a good bit past, let's see, they are, they're about almost an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch past the edges of my fabric. As we're sewing this, I'll show you the benefit of doing that. You can have your zipper be exactly the same size. That's perfectly fine. You can make your pouch any size that you want. It doesn't even have to be a rectangle. It could be a square. Circle zippers are a little bit more difficult to sew in, but it's the same process. You can make it cut at an angle. You can have any type of bag you want. This is just a process of how to put a zipper into a bag and specifically how to use one that's larger so how do you trim it up to make sure that it fits the bag? We're not gonna do any trimming ahead of time, we're gonna trim as we make the bag. I have some of the quilters clips. I use this for part of the process, but I also have my pins that I use for when I install my zipper. I find that using pins holds it all in place really well, but when I use these quilters clips, Either it's because I bought the generic ones and maybe they're not tight enough, maybe I'm using them wrong, I don't know, but my fabric tends to be able to slip a little bit more on the zipper part when I'm using those. And I find it, I like to use the pins in it better to hold it in place. You can do the zipper without any pins at all. And many times I only pin, I, when I get to halfway point, I tend to take all the extra pins out and just do it by hand at that point too. But it's nice to know that everything's lined up well to start with. So nothing shifts when in the beginning, because the beginning, if you start out crooked, it's gonna end up crooked, which just becomes a different type of bag, right? Because I'm using a yellow lining with this previous pouch, I did use a black thread, so it's not noticeable here. But the problem is, is if you don't change your bobbin thread, you will be able to see it. It'll be a contrast on your lining. So depending on what color your lining is and whether or not you want your thread to show up, you want to choose accordingly. If you're new to this and you're worried about your stitches being uneven, use a thread that's going to blend in and that's not going to be a high contrast like this. Now if you're looking at the front of my pouch, unless you get up really close to examine it, 
you're not going to notice if I have a little wobble on my thread. You're not going to notice if I dip down a little or if it's perfectly straight and lined up. So if you don't want it to show up, use something that is matching sew. So choose your fabric wisely and choose your thread wisely to go with it. This one, I'm going to go ahead and use yellow so that my lining will have a nice yellow thread on it and it won't be noticeable. But I'm going to have that extra highlight that's going across on this black fabric and that I'm going to be fine with. And it won't be as noticeable on this fabric. You'll still be able to see it, but it's not going to be as high contrast as it will be with the yellow going across the black. Before we head over to the sewing machine, let's go ahead and put our zipper and get our zipper pinned while we have plenty of area to work right here. We are going to start out by laying our outside piece of fabric face up. We're going to take our zipper and lay it face down. Face down means that the outside part of the zipper where the pull is, you know, where you're going to open and close it, you want that to be facing down. So technically it's right sides together. If you're very new at this and you want to do just one step at a time, because what we're going to do is we're also going to put our, our lining fabric in here. If you're worried about all these layers shifting, what you can do is you can take this first layer and just go ahead and put your pins in. You're going to line up the edge of your tape with the edge of your pouch bag there, the front of it. Put in as many zippers or use the clips, whichever works for you. I'm just going to kind of work my way down. For this length, I think I'll go ahead and put in four. Make sure I'm staying all lined up along the top. You can see there's the black. So I'm just going to line it up. As you see, I'm not being perfectly even. I'm, I have a pin here and two pins here, so you know, we're not spacing it specifically an inch apart or three inches or four inches. Now, if you want, you can skip ahead to the next part, watch the video, but when I get to the point where I show you how to sew it on, you can go ahead and sew this part on right now. And then you come back, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and put your lining fabric on. I have a solid, both sides are the same on this fabric. But what I want to do is I want to put it right sides down. So right sides are facing from my outer and my lining. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I line it up so that this point here, these edges, I have this whole side here is lined up into that spot. Just so nothing shifts, I'm going to add an extra pin there. Then I'm going to work my way down and I'm just going to keep all three sections lined up. You can do this all at once and not put that first round of pins in if you're comfortable doing that. Depending on the size of the bag, sometimes I do it that way, sometimes I don't. Make sure everything stays even. You don't want anything to get bunched up or off kilter at all. Yes, right now I have overkill with pins, but it's okay. If putting in, if you want to put in 75 pins and it makes you feel more comfortable and you go very slow and don't sew over them and go step by step, that's okay. As you get going, you'll get more comfortable. You may still want to use the same amount of pins or you may be able to use less. This is your bag and you want to make sure whatever you're doing is going to be comfortable for you and it's going to work for you. Okay, so I have it all lined up. Everything's nicely pinned. I have it as good as I can get along the top here. I can go ahead and either remove these pins or just bring them forward to all three of them. These are the original ones that I pinned just the zipper and the back of the front of the pouch on. Because right now it's, you know, it's behind us, it's on the back. It'd be the same process with clips. You would just go ahead and put the clips along there. Now that that's all set and nice and sturdy, I'm going to now take it to the sewing machine and we're going to go ahead and start stitching it. You'll have to excuse my voice. It's still pretty raspy today. Allergies. October is allergy season. When I'm going to sew this, I have my yellow thread in my bobbin and I have yellow thread on the top of my machine. I'm going to take my regular foot off and I'm going to switch it out for my zipper foot. If your sewing machine has a zipper foot, this is going to make it so much easier for you. There are special zippers called bag zippers where this tape here is much wider 
than a regular zipper like this. This is just a basic zipper that you can use for almost anything you want. Uh, most of us use them for bags just because they're easily readily available in a variety of lengths and colors but if you get a specialty bag zipper this tape part that's on the outside of the zipper is going to be wider you can then sew that with your regular foot if your machine and your foot and everything works out well and you have a narrower foot and you can just zoom right along the side you can use a regular one but i always use my zipper one set my regular one aside i'll be using that later in the bag mine just snap on Try not to put my hand in the way, but mine just snaps on. There we go, snaps on like that. And I'm gonna be able to run this edge right along my zipper so that the zipper teeth are gonna be right up against this edge right here, and then it's gonna stitch down here. I wanna make sure that my needle is going to be to the left. I had it in a quarter inch spot, so I need to make sure it's in my regular position so that when I bring my wheel, if I take the wheel on the right of my sewing machine and I bring it down, my needle's not gonna hit anywhere on that zipper. I sew with my fabric to the left, so I'm gonna use the left-hand side of my zipper. If you wanna put your fabric over here or your, however you're sewing differently, you can. this one has two separate slots that I can put in either spot. I have my stitch length, it is at a 2.4. And that's just what my machine is automatically on. When I turn that on, I am fine with that. I like to just bring my thread up to the top just so I don't get any types of bird's nest, bird's nest on the back of it. This first run here, it's not going to be noticeable because it's going to be on the inside of the pouch between the between the two parts, the front of the pouch and the liner. So it's going to actually be on the inside and you won't see it. I like to stitch it to where this is the, the right side of my zipper, so I like to stitch along the top so that the side of my presser foot can go right along the side of this, the actual zipper part. You could, if you want to, stitch from this side. You don't have as much of a lip to go against. I just flip it over. I like to start back a little bit away from where I'm starting. I just want to make sure that that little metal stopper back here is not going to interfere. This is a good point about having it so much further that there's nothing here in the way now. There's no metal stopper. There's no zipper pull that's going to be in the way. So when I'm using a larger zipper like this, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and sew. If your machine is adjustable with speed and you're a little bit nervous about doing this, pop your speed down a little bit slower. We don't have to race through this. When I'm sewing blocks and just sewing scraps, I'm going, you know, pedal to the metal as fast as I can. Something like this, I'm gonna go a little bit slower so that I don't, the faster you sew, the more things can wobble. So this has a lot of room to wobble. I don't wanna, there's a lot of things that are gonna cause it to wobble, so I'm gonna go nice and slow. So I put my needle down. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this first pin out just because the presser foot is sitting right on it. But I'm gonna to try to hold this a little bit so that none of this fabric buckles and starts coming this way. I wanna make sure it doesn't get caught underneath that zipper foot anywhere. All right, 2.4 stitch length. I've got my regular needle in there, nothing special, and I've got my zipper foot. I'm running it along the side on the zippers here, but for me, I'm lining it with my eyeball up. It's gonna go almost to the center, off a little bit to the right, maybe three quarters of the foot. So I'm gonna be watching this more than this, because this is just gonna ride along it nicely, and I just wanna make sure I'm lining it up good. I'm gonna go slow for a few stitches. See how that wants to bunch up there a little bit on me? Let me just pop this out. start a little further up so that I'm more my presser foot here is more weighted on that fabric that way it doesn't move and bunch up it happens every now and then it's not a crisis you saw I just took my seam ripper popped out a couple stitches that's why you go slow so you notice these things right away hey look because of that my thread came undone re-thread my needle Sometimes you're just having one of those days where things happen. It's okay. It's not a crisis, right? You line this back up. It 
back under my foot. This is going to be in the seam allowance, so it's going to be okay. I don't worry about backstitching because, as I said, it's going to be in the seam allowance, but if you like the backstitch, go ahead and backstitch. But once you get going, that's when things start to feel a little better and you can start moving along. I take my pins out as I go. Sometimes I can hold the back little zipper here and help guide it. I'm holding it down here so it goes nice and smoothly. I have long pins, so let me pull them out just a little bit to make it easier. That way I can sew right up to them and they don't get stuck under the presser foot. Because when the head of the pin gets underneath there, it gets hard. And then once it gets going, just kind of go nice and smooth. If you end up having any bit of fabric coming in this way, just let it come this way and we'll go ahead and trim it off afterwards. Some fabrics behave nicely and others just want to ripple a little. It's better to have it come off to the edge and just trim it off a little than to get a tuck in your fabric. I can make, let's say I make 10 pouches. I would say seven or eight of them are perfect. There's none of this ripply fabric. And then three of them will be like this. When I get to this part, I tend to just pull all these out. Then I can line up. I have my, my liner. I line my zipper up. Then I line my top fabric. And I just go. Since my zipper pull is all the way over here, I can run all the way off of this fabric without having a problem. I wanna show you what it would be like if your zipper was just the exact same size. Let's say, just if your zipper ended up right here. I'm just gonna move this zipper here so it would be in the way so that we can kind of see how it is. So as I'm coming up to this, I would be towards the end somewhere and my zipper head's right there so it's in my way. So what I can do with my needle down, I lift my presser foot, I can turn my fabric, find my zipper head, and usually if you turn it one way or the other you should be able to pull the zipper head out of the way. As you can see, this is why Many people like to have it a bigger zipper. So I pull it out of the way and then I can continue on and there's no problem. And then I would just go ahead and come back and close up my zipper. But since my zipper head is way past here, I don't have to do any of that. You saw I just went from one end to the other and with no worries. Now let's head back over to the table and I'll show you the next step. Now at this point we have the option, we can just finger press this. We're just gonna bring our lining back, give it a little bit of a press there. Then we're gonna bring our front back, give it a little press here. Or you can go ahead and use your iron. Now you wanna be careful if you're using the nylon zippers because the nylon can melt. I just kinda quickly smooth it across the zipper. And on my front, kind of give it a little bit of a press right along that edge without hitting the zipper or touching the zipper for very long. Just short amounts of time and it's usually pretty good. Same thing here. And what you want to do is I tend to like just squish this fabric down. When you're working with a quilted one with batting, the liner tends to get all miscombobulated because of the way that the two fabrics like to stick together that the cotton loves to stick to batting so just kind of line up at least one side of it we did get that little bit of it where our fabric pulled because we're not using a walking foot so sometimes the machine the needle the zipper the fabric it just doesn't always work together and it will pull a little bit we are only off by such a small smidgen down here just an eighth of an inch that's going to get eaten up in the seam allowance or we can trim it off either way
Now we can take this over to the machine and top stitch this section and put that nice decorative stitch along here. And the reason we do that is so that the liner doesn't somehow, when you're using your bag, you've all had those bags that you pick up for like a dollar or something and the lining gets up and when you unzip it, it gets stuck in the zipper. Well, if we do the little top stitching, that's gonna keep the liner and your outer fabric all nice and neat and it's gonna hold it in one spot and it's gonna give it that little top stitching professional look to it, like you know what you're doing and all. At this point, you can do your straight line on this side, or you can just go ahead and wait till we do both sides. Today, we're gonna to wait till we have both sides done. So after we get this side on, then we'll go ahead and take it back to the machine and we'll straight stitch it. But let's get this part of the zipper on because we only have half a pouch and we don't have a back yet. The back here is our lining. So we're gonna start putting our lining down this is right sides up, and then we're gonna put our other lining down on top of it, so now we have right sides together. We're gonna to scooch this down so that it lines up along the top. You can once again go ahead and put all your pins in, stitch it first, then put your outer fabric on it and stitch it again, but we're gonna go ahead and do it all one step. Our outer fabric, just the top of your zipper, so decide where the top of your fabric is. If you have it a directional fabric, then you want to make sure you have the top. It's not no trick, it's going to be the top is the top. So whatever's up here, that's the top of your fabric. You don't have to do any of those upside down weird things sometimes you have to do. I think that I like my fabric this way. So right sides down, because we want these two right sides to match. These are a team. And then these are a team, the lining fabric. So we want the right sides to be touching. So I'm gonna start on this side and I'm just gonna go ahead and line up my linings. This is the one that's got a little bit extra that is stuck out there that's going to be okay. And I'm gonna line up my outside pouch with that so that the front, the one that's not sewn on, and the lining that's not sewn on yet match right here. I know it's kinda of hard to tell, but you've got that right there and right there and they all line up nicely. And then we're just going to go ahead and put our pin in. That pin felt a little dull. And then we're going to keep lining it up. We're going to have our outside to the top. Make sure that lining is to the top. If you notice that you're having issues with your fabric pulling, maybe when we do the second side, we'll put some extra pins in it to hold it a little bit better. Although we did have quite a bit of pins in it to start with. Just keep lining it up so that all three pieces are flush across the top. I just put my finger in between and just kind of move them around a little bit. When I'm doing this, I find that it's easier to have it off of the table and kind of dangling. I know everything just seems to line up easier than if I'm working on a flat surface. Bring this down, bring that down. This is not the exciting part. And as I said, as you get good at it, if you wanna skip the pinning, go for it. If you think that's, if, you, if you're able to stitch it without having all the pieces and you can just line it up as you go and adjust it like I did at the end, then there's no problem. As you can see, I am a little bit off. I'm going to start stitching at this end. I am a little bit concerned that they're not lined up. So instead of totally ignoring this and just saying, oh, I'll just go ahead and sew it and it'll be fine, which is what I've done in the past, I'm gonna take the time to do it right and repin it gonna line it up here more sometimes that's what we have to do we have to stop and we just have to readjust and start over and it's okay because I would rather start over now with pins than to have to get out the seam ripper and try to start all over again and taking the seam out undoing a zipper is no different than undoing a seam and it's not fun
See, in this time, everything lined up much better. Whatever I did, I started it in the wrong spot. I lost my way, but it's fixed now. Now I can take it over to the sewing machine and go ahead and get this stitch down. Okay, you guys got a nice close-up view this time. Let's go ahead and get this started. Haven't changed anything. Needle, I still have the same zipper foot. I'm still at 2.4. To the table so we're gonna do the same thing go ahead and just finger press or go ahead and hit it with your iron and you're going to make sure that your back is going to be all off to the side just like your front was now we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to do our top stitching along here i'm just going to do a straight stitch you can find one of the little decorative designs on your sewing machine if you'd like and do a little decorative stitch through here. You'd probably want to have contrasting thread for that so that it can be seen. As you see, I do have some pieces that aren't perfect. Everything's not lined up exactly. I'm not going to worry about that. I can go ahead and trim that after and make everything nice and straight. When you're making your pouches, give yourself a little extra room on the side so that you can just skim off a little eighth of an inch if you need to or you can just take a little bit of a wider seam. As you get sewing and you're used to things like this, you can just follow, like you know this edge is a straight edge, so you can just go ahead and follow this and you can go ahead and just ignore that little extra. It's all up to you and how you do it, but we're gonna go ahead and square everything up nicely. Take it to our sewing machine. I'm gonna show you how to top stitch. I'm gonna show you how to prepare your zipper. I still have my zipper foot on. I'm still sticking with my yellow contrast thread. I'm gonna be fine with that. You can start on either side, it's not gonna matter, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a little top stitching about an eighth of an inch or so right along here. You can go a little bit further down. It's not meant to hold all these fabrics together with the zipper. Well, our top stitching is meant just to keep that lining fabric, as I said, from creeping up and getting into that area. Now what you can do is you can make sure everything is pulled away from the zipper you can add a line of pins out of your way down here, or you can do like I do, and I just kind of, I'm not like pulling and forcing and being strenuous, but I'm just holding these apart, and I'm just going to pet it down as we go, and I'm just going to make sure everything's out of the way. This side doesn't matter, but I need to make sure on this, on my right side, that my lining is pulled taut, and that my top is taut, but put pins down there if you want to make sure that you're not going to have any issues. Now this one, I definitely like to go ahead and make sure my thread is up to the top. I've been getting little bird's nests on the back, and it's not nice. Like I said, most of the time it goes into the seam, but I don't want to take a chance. I'm going to line my edge of my presser foot right here, right on the edge of my stitching. And as it's going, I've noticed, especially with the quilted ones, the bag tends to want to go like this as you're stitching, so you got to kind of hold it and keep it lined up. It's not a race. It goes super slow. I don't sew these very fast, but once everything's cut out, you can make one of these bags in 15 minutes easily. If you have all your fabric cut out and prepped, the actual sewing is only 15 minutes. This video is probably going to be quite longer than what it takes to actually make one of these. So go slow. Follow the presser foot right along this little edge here. I'm still doing the 2.4. You can drop down to 2.0 if you'd like. I don't see that it makes that much of a difference in this section. Check to make sure your lining is still not in the way. You can usually feel it if you have an issue. I try not to let go until it's all the way out. 
because it has a mind of its own and it wants to do whatever it wants. Now that was done in real time. That is actually the speed that I sew it on. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up for you because you've already seen it. I make sure everything's all lined up nice and neat. Got my thread to the top so it's out of the way. I'm putting my presser foot so it's all the way on this black and it doesn't butt up to it and bunch it up. So that, that edge is underneath all the presser foot. The whole presser foot doesn't have to be on there. We just don't wanna get stuck on that ridge. Care of those extra threads just so they don't get stuck somewhere later on. Now for our zippers, I can take off my zipper foot. We can switch back to our regular foot. I'm not changing anything else in my machine. Just it's easier to do it without the zipper foot. You can do the whole thing with a zipper foot, but I'm going to go ahead and make a bar tack across here on this zipper at the end of the zipper. The zipper pulls all the way over here. I'm doing the stopped end first. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bar tack down here, thread, just in case as we're stitching it before we get to the next step, we don't want the zipper pull to come all the way off. Because with these zippers, they say it's basically impossible to get it back on. That if your zipper pull comes off, you're just going to have to throw it away. So at my farthest end, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stitch right here, even though this one's the longest, in case we decide to want to trim it. I'm going to go here, so whatever my shortest piece of fabric is, I'm going to put my bar tack just in that general area, less than an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch from the end. Let my needle go down at the end of this fabric, and I'm just going to go ahead and stitch forward and backwards two or three times just to build up the thread there so it doesn't come off accidentally. Now, if your zipper was the correct length, you wouldn't have to do this. It's not something you would do normally because then your zipper stops would be right there and it would stop them from doing it. Now we're going to do this side. If I just go ahead and sew it right here, my zipper tab is on the outside of the pouch. It's going to get cut off. So remember to unzip it at least halfway. You can pin or clip these. Just kind of hold them. Just kind of grab each end, go slow. This part's going to be in the seam, if not cut off, so it's not going to be a problem. I did a horrible job of holding it together, but the thread's there to stop it, and that's all that's going to matter. I'm also not going to touch my zipper. I'm going to leave it right there. So let's head back to the table again. We're getting our exercise today, and I'll show you how to go ahead and trim this up, get it all folded up, and then we can start stitching again. Like any other sewing project, you have options now. You can go ahead and trim these off now, or you can wait till you sew your pouch together. And depending on whether or not you're going to be cutting off this extra fabric to, to get it all lined up, you can go ahead and leave it as is, or you can go ahead and trim it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as is. It's gonna get caught up into the seam allowance. I'm not that worried about it. I'm gonna take a half an inch, three eighths to a half an inch of a seam allowance, so it's gonna be fine. So I am gonna trim these ends off. There is not too much to the ends of it, but I'm gonna go ahead and save these for small like art postcards and stuff like that, little art quilt projects. Go slow, don't use your best scissors, because you don't wanna use your really sharp scissors to cut off something like this. It cuts right through the vinyl. That's one of the differences between using metal and vinyl with the vinyl like this, and the nylon I should say. You can just cut right through it with a good old pair of Walmart scissors and it's not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and save these pieces, toss them out if you want. Anything you want to do with them, it's fine. But I like to just add them onto little things for decorations. If this were a longer piece, then you could actually fold it over and put it in here and you can have that little tab loop there or save it for another project. But these are actually pretty short. 
you can take the metal piece off with a pair of pliers and you know if you want to take this apart or you can leave it on there because right now it looks like a pair of pants right it's been a long day I'm getting a little crazy at this point so but all right back to what we were doing for this part this is when I tend to bring out the clips we are going to take our front and our back our outer fabrics right sides together these are the two pieces that are going to get sewn together and these are the two pieces that are going to get sewn together Make sure your zipper is still at least halfway. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine a little bit further closed than I normally would. So when we get to the next part, I can kind of show you how to fix it if you didn't go ahead and open your zipper. Now, if you left your zipper completely closed, you're kind of out of luck. You're gonna to have to undo seams to get it open. But if you didn't leave the opening far enough because you really weren't paying attention and you thought, hey, that's far enough until you learn where to leave it exactly. I'm gonna show you how to fix this situation. So we're gonna put our two outer fabrics together. This is zipper. When you look at the zipper and you start putting your fabrics together, the zipper is gonna to wanna to automatically go to your lining. Don't force it. You want it to go to your lining, that's a good spot for it. I like to look right here and I like to line this part here with this part here. Just line them up the best you can. And that's when I go ahead and stick a clip in it. And I come over to the other side. All that zipper is gonna get pushed into the lining part of it, and that's where you want it. I line those up so that when I sew it together, it's gonna to be lined up when I flip it the right side out. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and put pins everywhere else. I do tend to adjust it as I'm sewing. Sometimes as you're doing it, it might get a little, you know, wonk of eye there. You just kind of fix it back up as you're sewing and put it back where it belongs. It's all gonna go together nicely. I guess I didn't trim my threads. This really would not be a problem, except for the fact that we can all see them right now. And then with our lining, we're also gonna kind of do the same thing. Now, this is where we have some of it's a bit off. When we stitch it, we'll just make sure we're stitching from this side so that we can see where that edge is. When I stitch these, I like to start in the center here. I leave a spot for turning and the lining. Just like most of the other bags we make, you leave about a handful spot for the lining, three, four inches. I'm gonna stitch here. I'm gonna stitch all the way down, all the way around, back over and down here. You can double stitch over the zipper part if you'd like. I usually don't because on this type of a bag, there's not as much stress at that point as in a, like the boxy bags where the zipper's on top and stuff. These seem to do fine, but we can go ahead and double stitch on those a couple times. And then I'm gonna go around and I'm also gonna stop and leave the opening. You can put a couple pins there if you wanna remind yourself, a couple clips. If the way this bag is a little Caddy Womper, like I said, and it's not all lined up, you can go ahead and take your ruler. Before we get sewing, you can go ahead and just trim these up and make sure your edges are nice and trim. I wouldn't worry about the two ends, just your sides, if at all, if you're concerned. Okay, let's go ahead over to the sewing machine and we're almost done. When I'm sewing my bags, I like to go ahead and stitch, put my stitch length down to 2.0 just so that it has enough strength and extra bit of strength and structure along the outside edges. So any type of roughness that you're done with it, that as you're turning it back outside, right sides out and all, you don't have any of the issues. And as I said, we can go ahead and just stitch this side. We can stitch this side, stitch our bottom, and then stitch our lining with the opening, or we can stitch around the whole thing. As long as all the parts get stitched, it doesn't matter in which order you do it in. Because we have this section that's a little bit off there, I might go ahead and just stitch my sides first and then stitch both ends just so that I know that I have, I mean, that's a good amount there. That looks like a good quarter of an inch but my lining is see-through enough that I can see, but I'm just gonna go ahead just to make sure I'm gonna, snitch, I'm gonna stitch down this side first. We don't have to do it all the way around and continuous. We can take it in small bites. 
We do not need to double back stitch here because we're going to go ahead and stitch across it. I slow down a little bit when I get to the zipper. Make sure everything on this side of the bag is lined up nicely where it needs to be. Everything's laying smoothly. I don't want to force it one way or the other. I just want it to lay nice and flat. I have this little bit of a dip here, so I'm going to make sure I cover that. If you want, we can backstitch over it for extra durability on the zipper. Now, did you see right here where I kind of scooted over to the side a little? That's going to be okay because that means that my outside bag is going to be a little bit wider than my lining. So when my lining is sitting in there, it's not going to be all loosey-goosey on my lining. It's not going to be, you know, sometimes linings are just, there's too much extra fabric. I snuck over to the side because it was too, it was smaller here and we didn't trim it even. But it works out okay if I snuck over here and just did along a little bit of a quarter inch to a half inch or so. Depending on what size, what size you want to do, a quarter inch is fine. A lot of times they tell you to, to sew at a half inch and then they have you trim it down to a quarter inch anyways. If you feel comfortable stitching with a quarter inch, because a lot of times if you're a quilter you do, then just go ahead and stitch it that way. If you stitch your lining just a little bit shorter, if you stitch your outer bag at a quarter inch and you stitch your lining at three eighths of an inch, it'll eat up that little bit extra fabric in your lining and you won't have as baggy of a lining. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out because, you know, we are a little bit off balance there. Now smooth it out this side. We have the same kind of crookedness over here. This actually worked out really good because, like I said, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. Now you can see a way to fix it. And when it's all done, you're going to see, oh, gee, the pouch looks perfectly fine. And I didn't even know Robin had these issues. Stitch here again. This puts me at a 3 8 of an inch automatically just based on where my needle is. I believe both the yellow and the black fabric is that broad, broad cloth or something that they have at Joann's that's at a discount. A friend of mine had bought rolls and rolls of it to make tablecloths and then the extra she gave to me. And it's not, I don't, it doesn't feel like it's 100% cotton and I think it definitely acts differently when you're sewing it. And since we backstitched on one side, we'll backstitch on the other. And then after I get past the zipper, everything's laying flat I'm pretty close to being lined up over here I'm gonna go ahead and just scoot over this way a little do a little diagonal sewing and then finish off my seam now we have to worry about here I don't see anything extra sticking out over there so I can just go ahead and stitch oh, I took a pretty narrow seam there I'm just gonna go ahead and take another seam just because it's quite narrow if we're going to have so much for a tutorial, Robin's showing you all the things you can do to make a mistake. But I don't want to worry about that at all because I got a little too close to the edge. I can take another seam. Trust me, everyone else that's making bags have problems too. Not every single bag is perfect. That extra bit of stitching is in the seam allowance. And I see I was noticing here it's starting to fray. Now, even though I have this stabilizer interfacing on here, it could still fray past that and then my pouch would fall apart. If I gave this at a gift or even if I kept it for myself, how useful it would be if things are going to fall out the side. So it's okay to just go ahead and make another stitch, um, another seam line. Nobody's going to see this. It's now double reinforced, so if it does fray, there's not a problem. And now I can go ahead and stitch along the top, which is actually the bottom of the bag. Now this part you can do with a walking foot if you prefer so that none of all your fabric feeds evenly. I have to be careful because I have a wall right back there and sometimes this will hit that and it'll cause an issue. But I've got that one done. 
Now I need to go ahead and do the bottom. Now this is the inside of my lining. Remember we need to leave an opening to fit our hand in to pull the bag through. The smaller the opening, the smaller seam you have to you know, stitch up in the afterwards, but the smaller it is, the harder it is to pull the bag out. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my 3 8 cents of a seam here. I like to stitch off the edge. It keeps the, the seam from tearing and it just makes this part fold over easier when you go ahead. I machine stitch mine closed, but you can hand stitch it closed. I know five stitches for me brings me right to where I need to be. And I just stitch off the end. Okay, we are finally at the home stretch. I know this seems very tedious, but we have to go through this process. As I said, once you start stitching it at home, it's gonna go so much quicker for you because you're not gonna have to stop and do all the chitter chatter and stuff. When we're sewing bags, it's always nice to trim the corners off. Just to reduce some of that bulk, you wanna stay away from about an eighth of an inch away from where your two seams crossed, but you take out that extra bit of bulk in there and that helps your corners a little. If you think you've taken a large seam, you can go ahead and trim that down. Like here on our side where we have this extra, I can go ahead and just, and what I wanna do is, let's see. Let me start from this side so I can just trim up, take that extra bit off. Now we do have all this extra zipper there, but if I bring it up close and I'm not just trying to cut it all off, I can take this at an angle Make sure I leave enough room where we stitched. Carefully cut that off. It's a little hard to go through the zipper, especially since it's folded over. So you want to be careful you're not going crazy and you just all of a sudden cut into your bag. So we have the same thing on this side. You see how when I was stitching, how it kind of wrinkles up like that? That's what I learned that the broadcloth does. It tends to try to like gather underneath the foot. So it works okay for bags. I definitely don't like it for quilts, but I know many people do use it. I personally struggle with it. So the little bit of savings that I'm saving, for me, it's not quite worth it, because I do, I do struggle with it. But as I said, a lot of people love it and they use it all the time. So we can take it over and we can press our bag, but I'm gonna go ahead and press it at the end. So I'm gonna put my hand in here. Now, if you remember, we didn't open up our zipper enough, right? So how are we going to get the bag to go through? See, we just have this little spot here. Now we can, I can get my hand in there and do it, but the little trick I've learned, that it's hard to see, but if you just, I just put my hand in and do it. Let me see if I can get it so you can see it. So here's the zipper, right? I kind of put my hand in here. You can feel the little tab. If you pull the tab down, you can kind of take your fingers and just scrunch it along like this. You get your hand in the bag and just kind of slide it along. Sometimes if the hole's too small, you can get hemostats in there. And it's just gonna help you to unzip that zipper. Because of the way the nylon ones work, you can just push this down and it just slides along. So that way you can open it up more. But if you have it completely closed, I'm not sure that there's anything that you can do to get it open. You can try taking some hemostats and holding onto this metal part and sliding it down. It's worth a try before you toss it or you know cut it back open and start all over. I'm gonna fold the bag in and grab it with your hand. Pull it out gently. See, this keeps that extra bit from tearing, from that seam popping. You can backstitch on the seam. That's gonna help it too. At this point, I like to start with this spot here. And I just like to open the zipper all the way. You can use your fingers, your scissors, a uh, pen, pencil, uh, the eraser off a of pencil. I have that plastic crochet hook that I usually use to pop these out. Put my thumb in the corner here and my finger on the inside and just pull it through. We are gonna have to go over to the machine and sew this closed, but we're gonna hold off for that on just one minute.
close my zipper up a little bit put my finger in there you can feel the end of the zipper tape there's a couple more tricks that I'm, I'm checking out on videos and different people I've been seeing them on Instagram stories a different way to handle this part of the zipper so maybe you don't have this here I don't want to force it all the way up because I don't want to pop my seam which is another good reason to put your stitch length down to 2.0 If you see here, my bag goes at an angle at both parts of these zippers. That is how it works. That's just the way it is. There are ways around it. There's a thing called zipper tape where people put little tabs of fabric on the end of their zippers so that it's the fabric will fold in there. It'll be easier to come out because this is quite bulky right here. You'll be able to feel it quite easily. I don't like that because the fabric will come all the way out to here and then you can't open your pouch all the way you can only open your pouch to where that fabric is so sometimes it means your pouch only opens up this much but i mean i want all that real estate i want to be able to open it up all the way so now we have this hole to deal with there's a couple ways you can do it Well, I've got thread. This is the pieces that came off of the fabric themselves. They get caught in the seams. So what you can do is you can take that, they have that um, like wonder under tape. You can put it in there and just use the heat and bond stuff there to seal that up. I pop my corners out gently. I don't worry about it because your corners are going to be pushed back in. Take care of all these extra threads. And because I stitched off the edges, when I go like this, you see how easy it just seems right up? It's exactly where it needs to be. I can take it over to my iron and give it a nice little press, or I can just take it to my machine like this. Let's press it and make it pretty. Now, if you don't want to stitch, when we stitch this with the sewing machine, you're gonna stitch right along the edge, about an eighth of an inch top stitching. You're going to be able to see the thread. There's no way around it. If you don't like the thread on there, what you can do is you can hand stitch it closed with a ladder stitch. You can find videos for ladder stitch. I believe I might have shown one at one point, but you can just hand stitch back and forth, pull it nice and tight, and it'll close it up. I'm gonna go ahead and take it over to the sewing machine and just go ahead and put a little stitch along the edge. I see them both ways in bags in your commercial mass produced. They're all stitched by machine. They're not gonna sit there and hand stitch it for a $3 bag at Walmart. So let's go over there and I'll show you what that looks like. My machine's already set at a 2.0. I can leave it there. I can put it back up to a three if I want. I like to move it over to the right-hand side so it's at the quarter inch mark. And right here is where my hole ends. So I'm gonna go a couple of stitches back from where it ends. And I'm gonna drop my needle just like barely an eighth of an inch from the edge. Pull my thread to the top once again so we don't have that mess on the back. Now I'm going to stitch, like I said, a scant 16th to an eighth of an inch right along this edge. What I want to do is make sure that the edges of the opening are lined up nicely, one right on top of another. You can take a little bit of a deeper stitch line in there if you'd like. I do a little back stitching just to secure it. And then I just kind of slowly stitch right along there. A little bit of a tension back here. Back stitch, cut my thread. Snip all those loose ends and all these wild ends that are just showing up. That's another thing with that broadcloth stuff. It just, it seems to fray and have threads everywhere. All right, last time back to the table and let's take a look at it. Now the only thing left we have to do is to get our lining all tucked back in. Kind of match your corners up with your fingers. Poke, you're gonna, you're gonna poke your lining into your corners this time instead of having it poked the other way. So get it all down in there. You can give it one good final press, but there's our pouch. That wasn't that difficult. 
and they said the video is going to be much longer than the actual process of making it you can make these any size most any shape you want longer zippers shorter zippers this is what you see it does add this little bit of a ridge in there when you go ahead and stitch along the edge it, it's just it is what it is as I said, it's in most bags like that. If you wanted to, you could put your opening to turn it along the inside on the side of the lining versus on the bottom. Most people just go ahead and stick it on the bottom. Most people who buy the bags expect to see it there or don't even notice. One pumpkin pouch, all done. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you want to see more tutorials like this please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and if you ring that little bell YouTube will let you know when I have my next video up. I hope you guys have a great day and make some pouches for gifts this year. Bye!